I kind of see Deepin as like trying to create these two-sided token economies of which IoT devices can, can be part of that narrative. Once you created this network of communication between nodes, now suddenly you have peer-to-peer -peer communication literally without any third-party intermediary. So we've got this uh, global system of communication now where you can have machine-to-machine -machine payments, you can have um, autonomous agents both validating information using it and then getting value from that information that they then propagate. Well, thank you very much for joining me here today. Uh, I've got a couple questions I want to ask you just kind of rapid fire. But the first one is this idea of, of on-prem or on-device versus in the cloud, whether it's servers and computation or whether it's storage. I feel like this is like a, a technological trend that has kind of shifted back and forth to either end of the spectrum. I think, you know, originally things were done kind of on-prem, on-device, then everything moved to the cloud. And now I think it seems like we're seeing a shift back. Mm. Um, and so I want to ask you, you know, why you see that shift back and how Minima is involved. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Great to be here. And uh, it's a very important question. I think that for us, Minima is the embedded blockchain. It can work on device. We can attest data at source. And I think that is um, really, really important, adding huge value. And you know, to the question, why are we moving that way? Now we can do it. I mean, I, I think the important point is that you should be able to test data at source. And uh, so our lightweight protocol allows us to be able to test data as it's produced on any device, IoT, um, you know, on, on hardware that is producing critical, mission critical data. Right. And yeah, I just had uh, Rowland of IOTEX in here and we were talking about real world verification yes. and how to do it, right? It's this, this problem that's floating around deep and that no one really knows how to solve. So right. I think right. if you're able to, you know, run a blockchain on the end device that that gives you some level of additional verification. Yeah, say? Oh, um, I'd say a uh, hundred percent improvement in what is done normally. Uh, if you have to outsource the attestation to, to another node, another computing system, um, you are all you are always one step away from validating the data where it's where it's needed. And importantly, once you've created once you've created this network of communication between nodes, now suddenly you have peer to peer communication, literally without any third party intermediary. So we've got this uh, global system of communication now where you can have machine-to-machine -machine payments, you can have um, autonomous agents both validating information, using it, and then getting value from that, from that information that they then propagate. So it's, it's generating you know, an entirely different uh, economic model now for the data that, that we are producing. Yeah, it's like the, the, I don't know if you saw the, the Raptor um, spacecraft engines and they right. had like three versions and the third version was by far the most like sleek and, and minima minimized, like just simplicity and removing layers of, of trust and trust assumptions, I think helps you to get to that actual true real world verification much faster. Exactly. And, and importantly, every node is equal. There's no node that is more, uh, you know, has higher, um, uh, compute than others. And therefore everyone uh, trusts that data because everyone is e uh, is an equal participant in in the network. So you're right. You know, there's a lot of use cases from deep in now that are kind of fall into place when when you remove that element of can we trust that data, or how do we communicate. So so uh, you know, there's an exciting moment where that need and that um, validation can take place uh, as it's produced. It removes again that that always a question of can I trust that data set. Right. No, that makes sense. Minimum has been around since 2018. Correct. Yeah. It's very long, yes. very long time for a crypto startup. Um, what advice would you have to crypto founders that are looking to build something that lasts multiple cycles and can survive kind of the volatility inherent in our industry? Yeah, yeah that's a perfect. Uh, it's a very good question. I mean, interestingly, it's quite nice to be here and not as a true startup in terms of we're not you know, the question is, oh, are you going to TGE? You know, when are you going to start launching your token? Our token's launched. Our token's been tried and tested. Mm -hmm. We have 50,000 node operators running our, our product now. So um, in terms of advice to new startups and new founders, as you say, absolutely, you have to take in, into account the bull and bear cycles. But you have to have true vision in your product. 
And even though there is a lot of D-pins that are fairly flaky in terms of the offer they are um, trying to provide, some of these um, are providing real, true real world value. You know, we are um, a, a shrinking global economy now where everybody is connected. And I think that spotting the um, spotting the, the the use cases where it's not just a quick win, it's actually building long term value. Right. I think that will survive. And uh, what's nice is that the the um, investor cycle uh, is now supporting these visionary projects, and people are having a little bit more uh, long term vision. And our mission always was to create a network and a, and a community based on trust, where the users are are um, equal participants. And I think that the, we are now really able to provide the rails for a lot of deep in projects just to use our communication network, which is already t- uh, tested and proven. Definitely. And, you know, we've mentioned IoT, we've mentioned deep in here. Uh, IoTextures, the company I work for, was also founded in 2018, 2019, when the narrative was IoT meets blockchain and get your smart fridge on the blockchain. Yes. Um, I saw some IoT kind of branding messaging on your website, but obviously we're here at a Deepin conference. We're talking about Deepin as well. So, I mean, how do you see the two being different? Um, do you prefer one over the other? Like I kind of see Deepin as like trying to create these two-sided token economies of which IoT devices kind of can be part of that narrative. But yeah, how do you see the whole like IoT versus Deepin kind of debate? Um, I think Deepin had a good role to play in giving a, a common terminology. You mm-hmm. know, it is the uh, understanding that people can start earning for um, value they provide, and and that and that I think has has been a very important uh, reason that Deepin has now s- uh, sort of surfaced as the terminology. IoT is. Um, for us, important in terms of machine-to-machine communication, we 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 are moving towards embedded systems. And the most uh, exciting news from us is that we are now moving in chip. We're going to have a blockchain on a chip where Minimum will, will run in full embedded in IoT devices. So we are going to be the first in the world. We are signing a partnership with um, the world's largest chip manufacturer, Designer. And um, we are moving towards um, a system where People will have embedded blockchain functionality on smartphones, smart fridges, smart um, whatever you like, smart. You know. And so this is this is this is where it's heading. And our and true success for us is when people don't need to know they're using the blockchain. Right, your device comes straight from the manufacturer as a blockchain node or with blockchain yes, capabilities. Yes, exactly. And and basically, we're now moving into AI. Um, uh, autonomous agents, which will both use the um, algorithms, but also get value from the data that they are creating. And it will be a machine to machine payments um, uh, rails. For sure. Well, that's all I've got for you. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, we'll get these over to you soon. Thank you very much. Fantastic to be here. Nice to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Proof of Coverage podcast. We post new episodes Mondays and Wednesdays, interviewing the best Deepin and crypto founders out there. If you like this episode, follow us on Twitter at Coverage Proved and all other platforms, including YouTube and Spotify at Proof of Coverage Podcast. Thank you.